And that's what they told me I was being investigated as an EOS, an enemy of the state. <laughs> Welcome to This Is Not Happening presents One Crazy Night. So this is what we do. Uh, we're a bunch of comedians uh, tell stories about a similar subject. So this is just One Crazy Night. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Miss Julia Lewis, everybody. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, so this story is 100% true. Keep that in mind while we're going. I, uh, in, back in 2007, I had a short but serious uh, long-distance relationship with a douchebag in England. Um, yeah, for the douchebags. I didn't, I didn't realize at the time he was a douchebag. In fact, I actually thought he was the one. Ladies, you feel me? Uh, I thought we were going to get married. I was going to move to England. We'd have a bunch of little British babies who would have adorable little British accents and call me mummy. I was like wildly excited about it all. Um, then one day, I'm on a Skype call with him, and he dumps me on Skype. <laughs> he Skype dumped me. <laughs> he skumped me. Um, and I was devastated, like totally blindsided. So I did what any rational girl would do, right? I, uh, I called my mom. I called my best friend. Um, I called Papa John's. <laughs> <laughs> then I called 1-800-Expedia and bought a one-way ticket leaving that night straight to England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just kept thinking, like, and I honestly was thinking this. I'm like, if this was a romantic comedy, this is what the girl would do, and then she'd go there, and the guy would take her back. Like, that is what would happen. What would Bridget Jones do? Get her ass to England. So, okay, so here was the plan. This was literally the plan. One, I was not going to tell him I was coming, right? Then I would get there. He'd still be at work. But I would busy myself, keep myself busy in his backyard, painting my nails, doing crossword puzzles. Then he'd come home from work, we'd lock eyes, he'd realize like, oh, she's the one. He'd propose on the spot, we'd go out, and bonus, my nails are already done, we could get a ring stat. I had it all figured out, right? Um, so I get on the flight that night. And to keep myself distracted on the flight, because anytime I started thinking about what was happening, I would like freak out. So to distract myself, I'm a musical comedian. And I had a musical I had been toying around with writing. So I decided to write it on the flight. I started writing it. I pull out a spiral notebook and I just write away. And the next thing you know, we're landing and I start kind of losing it. I'm like, oh God, what's gonna happen? What if he doesn't take me back? This is crazy. And I start crying. And I get in the customs line. I'm just crying, and I get to the front of the customs line, and there's this little customs agent. He was like this 20-year-old, like adorable British kid, and he asked me, um, uh, "How long would I be in the country?" And I said, "It depends if my boyfriend takes me back." <laughs> and then I told him the whole plan, you guys. I told him everything. I told him about the Skype dump. I told him about the surprise the nail polish and the crossword puzzles. And I, find, I look at him and I'm like, is that crazy? And I shit you not, this kid like straight out of a romantic comedy in his adorable little British accent looks me in the eye and he goes, you gotta do what you gotta do for love. <laughs> and I was like, yes, you do gotta do what you gotta do for love. And I'm doing what I gotta do. This is my romantic comedy. I end up with the guy this is what Bridget Jones would do. Everything is working perfectly. And right then is when they detained me. Because <laughs> apparently, like, when you are sobbing and have no return plans and bought a one-way ticket six hours before your flight, those are all things immigration officials consider red flags. <laughs> So they brought me into the immigration detention center and I waited there for like a long time, like hours and then like a lot more hours, like a long ass time. Then they bring me out for an interrogation and um, I, I had to tell them the whole plan. You know, 
I had to tell him, like, he's the one. I just have to surprise him, and he'll remember I'm the one. And they told me they'd have to call him to verify the story. <laughs> like, like they, they clearly didn't understand the importance of the surprise part of the plan. So they call him. And I'm there thinking, like, ugh. You know, if I'm lucky, he'll think this is like charming and hilarious, and hilarious, and something we'll like tell our kids about. They'll be like, "Mommy is so funny." <laughs> they come back in, we're like, "We reached him," and of course, I'm like, "How'd he sound? <laughs> was he mad? Was he kind of excited? Did he sound like he was smiling?" Um, I didn't get anything from them. They did say uh, he verified your story. He told us you're just a lovesick girl from Los Angeles. No reason to detain you any longer. So I thought I was like home free. And that's what they told me I was being investigated as an EOS. I'm like, a what? An enemy of the state. <laughs> and they took the spiral notebook out that uh, was in my uh, carry-on, which they confiscated. So here's the thing, this musical I was writing. <laughs> um, it was 2007, it was back when like, remember when Britney Spears was kind of going crazy? She was like running around barefoot and eating Cheetos and like she shaved her head, so this is that time frame. So the, mus the basic premise of the musical was this. Um, what if Britney Spears was the pawn of a terrorist organization <laughs> and they had been raising her from birth to into a pop singing sensation just waiting for the right time to unleash her craziness on the whole country so she would distract us all while the terrorist organization attacked America. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's what they found in my carry-on bag. <laughs> And like when I look at it, I looked at it. It's like this is, these are just my pages of comedic dabblings. They saw as more of a terrorist manifesto, <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I found myself in the really awkward position of having to pitch Britney Spears terrorist <laughs> to a room full of Heathrow immigration officials. <laughs> so let me tell you, they were a tough crowd. <laughs> Uh, finally, amazingly enough, I did um, convince them that I was just a heartbroken girl from Los Angeles who was trying to live out her own romantic comedy while getting an unconventional musical up off the ground. <laughs> and they let me go. Um, I took a bus to the douchebag's house and uh, we had, there was no surprise, you know, no painting nails or cross proposals, definitely no proposal. We had a brief conversation that was kind of like, but you're the one, but you're not the one, but you're the one, but you're not the one. It was the one that, you know, that's the kind of conversation that can kind of go on forever. Eventually, I think I just got tired. I'm like, fine, I guess you're not the one. <laughs> and he bought me a one-way ticket home that left the next morning. And I woke up, said goodbye, and haven't spoken to him since. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs>Hi everybody, I hope you enjoyed the story. If you did, click like down there so that more people know that you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe so that you'll get the next story as soon as it comes out.